Greetings to everyone. My name is Anishri Rajan. I'm a PhD student working under the guidance of Dr. Pavan Kumar Thalapragada in the Department of Electrical Engineering at IAC Bengaluru. My research work is in the area of resource aware control of network control systems. In this talk, I will be presenting a brief overview of my work. A network control system is a control system where the control loop is closed through a communication network. There are different fields of applications of network control systems as shown in this picture. One of the main challenges in network control systems is resource constraints such as communication, computation and energy constraints. A popular control method widely used in network control systems is event-triggered control. Event-triggered control has the advantage of efficient utilization of resources while simultaneously achieving control objectives. In this control method, sampling or communication times are determined implicitly by a state-dependent event-triggering rule, which results in aperiodic transmissions or control updates based on need. Thus, event-triggered control is usually far more efficient in the usage of limited resources. In the literature of event-triggered control, usually the event-triggering rule is designed in such a way that the closed-loop system is stable. For example, you may be familiar with Lyapunov stability theorem, which states that if there exists a Lyapunov function with negative time derivative along the trajectories of the system, then the origin of the system is asymptotically stable. So in this example, we monitor the time derivative of a candidate Lyapunov function V and whenever V dot hits zero, an event is triggered. That is, the state information is communicated to the controller and the control input to the plan is updated. Hence, V dot becomes negative and the process continues. In event-triggered control, as the update times are implicitly determined and aperiodic, higher level planning and scheduling of shared resources is difficult. So, it is important to study about inter-event times for designing controllers that properly balance control objectives and constrain resources. An interesting question here is, how do the inter-event times evolve in time? The simulation results represent the evolution of inter-event times of a system for two different controllers. You can see that in one case, the inter-event time converges to a steady state value, whereas in the other case, it is oscillating in nature. Understanding the evolution of inter-event times helps to schedule multiple processes over a shared communication channel or to plan transmissions under constraints. Similarly, understanding inter-event times generated by an event triggering rule can help in the analytical quantification of the improvement of average inter-event times for an event-triggered controller over that of a time-triggered controller. However, very little research has been done on this problem. In our work, we provide a simple framework to analyze the evolution of inter-event times for a given continuous time planar linear system under a scale invariant event triggering rule. We give analytical guarantees for different behaviors of inter-event time evolution. Specifically, we answer the following questions. When do the inter-event times converge to a steady state value or to a periodic orbit? What are the possible asymptotic behaviors of inter-event times? And how to compute the asymptotic average inter-event time as a function of the initial state of the system? And when does the asymptotic average inter-event time becomes a constant for all initial states of the system? We also do similar analysis for general n-dimensional region-based self-triggered control systems. More details of our work can be found in the following papers. Thank you and have a great day.